which, which, you know, for those of us with women in our lives, it's mostly true. <laughs> she's, um, when I say consigliere, she's, you know, similar to the relationship I have with my wife. I can, I'll, I'll make the final call, the final decision, but I sure want to run it by her before I do that because she sees some things from afar. She sees the big picture and sees who may be a coming and sees where there might be a pitfall, possible pratfall down the line. She'll, she's got a really good view on that. I do as well, but she'll remind me of things. Rosalind will remind me of things. Well, look out for this and look out for this and look out for this without sentiment. And she's a baller, you know, um, and she's running her own business down here in, in the garage. And so, um, you know, our relationship is this, is, it's a pretty rock and roll relationship. And um, yeah, she's, the la she's my last person I go to to check in with. And she's my confidant. If there's anybody I can really 100% trust, it's her. And then after that, it'd be Ray. But if there's anyone that I 100% put my trust in, it's actually the keenest cat of them all, which is Rosalind. I'm mainly taking Guy's lead. You know, if you know Guy well enough, yeah, he loves directing films, but not as much as he likes talking about food and fashion. Or food and clothing, excuse me, Guy. Not fashion, clothing. Um, no, his eye for detail and his specific um, likes and dislikes when it comes to clothing and fashion are very defined. Um, and I've taken his lead because he's got some great ideas and he's got great style. So part of this is, you know, Michael, I'm wearing a lot of what Guy's style is and would be. And I'm happy to be wearing it because I'm really not, wasn't as interested in it before I got here, but now I've become keenly interested in it. My wife's getting quite a giggle about me and like, you're starting, what are you starting? You're really at home now, starting to just go out, we go to dinner, you're wearing that, yeah. She goes, oh geez, you're gonna be hell when we get back home, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am. I think it's fun, I think it's, the, for me, I think it's the long joke. You're gonna have some one-liners in this where you're gonna be like, whoa, rewind that, man. What did he just say? What a wicked way to undress somebody verbally, you know? What an original way to put someone in their place. But at the same time, you have the long joke, which for me is the juxtaposition. We've got all these suits and tough guys and aristocrats and things and such and this, and we're going on a shoot, so, but we are what? We're selling weed, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, the, it's very juvenile, and it, but yet it's a very legitimate business being run by adults who are very smart and there are heavy duty consequences in it. It's not, it's not your, it's not your at the corner of 11th and 12th, 11th Street stealing some weed movie. Yeah, well I think all guys' films are stylish in terms of the clothes. For me, I could have gone down the shabby raincoat, private investigator, tabloid guy route. Uh, and I did look at that, but I was, thought it would be more interesting to come at it sideways. And because my character is mad about films and particularly sort of 1960s films, uh, 1970s films, I thought that he might have based his wardrobe a bit on Francis Ford Coppola or Jean-Luc Godard or people like that and uh, that's the way I came into it. But glasses are everything and, and um, we found this pair that were kind of Ray-Bans but with slightly red tinted lenses and then the whole Oxblood theme started and I'm wearing an Oxblood jacket and Oxblood little boots. Uh, I'm thoroughly repulsive. Yeah, so they, the lads commit the crime, his boys, and they're not very good at it, i.e. they post it on YouTube and not very clever, but uh, it's found out who did it and, and I fall on the sword. I take the bullet for them. I go and see Charlie's character, Ray, and I have a word with him and say, you know, my boys don't know what they're doing and avail of me as you will until the debt is paid, whatever the debt may be. So I'm pulled into this, yeah, this web of, as I said, nefarious actions and, um, and reactions, and therein lies the tale, at least my part of the tale. For me, um, Guy Ritchie film, you know, apart from the aesthetic, you know, or the world in which the story takes place, particularly in reference to, to London tales, um, but it's all in the script, you know, the, the because I know, I know he has a huge part in the construction of the script and the dialogue, and he's even coming up with bits and pieces today. Not that I've been on the set, but the few times I walked by the set and I heard him you know, suggest a couple of lines of dialogue that aren't written in the script. They're all, of course, in absolute continuity with the sensibility that's 
being demonstrated that's you know that's on the pages and it's tasty stuff it's really really tasty stuff like i remember the first film of his like many others that i saw was lock stock and um just the riff it's just like jazz you know just jazz and everyone kind of bouncing off each other and you know yeah all these different notes being hit simultaneously <laughs>